So we started off with a vertical agitator and we were bumping clouds. <laughs> Okay, so we started yesterday, we had the hopper, when we'd fill it full of balls, everything got jammed up. We knew we were gonna have to get some kind of agitation method to get the balls to smoothly get into the shooter. So we first started just by vibrating the thing, banging on it, trying to pop it on the inside. That didn't really seem to have much effect. So then we stuck a ruler inside we'd vertically and we were trying to just make a, like a sweeper kind of oar motion inside of it, like a windshield wiper vertically inside of it. It made some effect, wasn't the best, it was okay. Um, went to sleep that night, we woke up, uh, then we tried taking like a comb, we took a funnel, we wrapped kind of like an Archimedes screw of grippy material on it, tried to spin that and try to make some lifting and churning, also didn't work. And then we finally went to a kind of blender style, a horizontal blade, we have some teeth on it, and that seems to be pretty effective. Um, right now the way it sits, it needs some tuning, but we're able to clear out the whole hopper eventually, so we can do about 40 balls and it's working pretty good. Needs some tuning, but hey, three days, we're doing pretty good so far. Eee. All right, so you might notice that we've got the climbing mechanism, the winch up on the top of the bot now. If you really wanna see some details on how this works, um, check out our day one video. We've got some shots of it running, but a couple details that we wanna talk about that we don't have in that video. So you might notice that it's on, an on a hinge, and the reason we have that is that we want, when the Velcro hits it, we want it to get a couple of wraps and start winding up before it's got load on it. So it's gonna wrap up and pull this up with pretty much no load on it. And then once it's got a solid wrap, then it's gonna start lifting and it's not gonna ha have the Velcro taking the load, it's gonna be the wrap on it. Um, you're also gonna notice that we've got our ratcheting wrench on here is a little stubby guy that we can release. So when we wanna let it down, we can do that. Back on day two, Andrew mentioned about the gear gobbler and things that we've learned about it. Originally with the design, we had it tilted forward, so it's able to receive the gears inside the actual uh, collector itself. What ended up happening is that because of the rules and what they're written, we had to have it in a more vertical orientation to stay within the chassis of the actual robot. So as a result, when we actually thrown the gears inside the collector, it kept deflecting out or wasn't going in all the way. So we made a lot of modifications, including cutting it out, adding PVC pipes, putting a Lexan deflect on the top. We had to redesign the actual gear gobbler for it to receive the actual gear, mostly because the opening over here on the bottom want to make it receivable for the actual peg to the airship. Right now, it's good to go. It's able to receive the gear for the majority of the time. We're talking about 90, 95%. Teams, do your homework. Uh, a lot of the math that was done was actually in trying to organize the setup, orientation, and the placement of the gear gobbler in relation to the robot. Integration is key here, especially with the packaging of the robots, especially with the parameters this year. You have two different types of configuration. You need to make the most of that space. So do the math before you start cutting.